This is Balloons TD6, the game where simple monkeys will just pop simple balloons. Or if you're fancy, you would have a tank doing that. However, if you've decided to play chimps mode at all, you might be a little bit familiar with this screen, the good old defeat screen. So even though you have your fancy tank, how do I become good? What is synergy and what towers do I use? And how do I simply get every single black border in Balloons TD6 just like that? So this is going to be the most complete BTD6 strategy guide ever. So to start this off, who am I and why am I talking to you? And who is that Moab Mauler right there? Oh, hey, look. That's me, I'm Chom Chom. So anyways, I am a BTD6 YouTuber. I like to upload expert maps on chimps and other fun strategies like that. So I have a ton of skill in this topic and I am here to show it to you. So in this series, we're gonna be turning your gameplay looking like this, quite the mess there on Monkey Meadows, dead to round 92, to being able to get all of these shiny black borders by yourself. Now with all of the general knowledge, and especially knowledge when it comes to chimps mode, I would be happy to help you get some of the hardest black borders like ravine and bloody puddles, along with all of the other black borders in between by teaching you some important skills and strategy in the game. Now one thing that I promise you is that this is not a guide and it will teach you the real chimp strategies to be able to get black borders yourself instead of just copying a setup for every single map. So we're gonna have this series put into six parts that will massively increase your skill and teach you all of the unique and cool strategies that are around in this game. In this series, I'm also going to be joined with two other highly skilled BTD6 YouTubers, Dorios and Unescaped, so you can check that out once you finish watching too. So today we're going to be looking at the first part, the introduction and basic game mechanics of Bloons TD6. This first episode is going to cover a lot of background knowledge that will be cut into six sections. These six sections will tell you everything that you need to know that will allow you to follow the rest of the series. Some people might know all of this stuff already, which is very cool, but if you need a better understanding, or perhaps you don't know some of the concepts we're going to cover, such as shatter type damage or Moab damage, for example, don't worry because we're going to cover all of it. And even if you do know some of this stuff, it might be a good refresher and you might learn something. If you want to skip past this introduction, that's fine because you can go to the pinned comment and I will have links to all of the future episodes when they come out. Now for the first section, this is going to be tower terminology. This is very simple because right here we have a dart monkey and I want to upgrade it to a 320. So I'm simply going to get three upgrades on the top, two in the middle and zero on the bottom. This is how specific upgrades and cross paths will be mentioned, so knowing this will allow you to get all of it. And if you see X's, that means the upgrade is not specified or optional. Now moving on from the tower terminology, let's look at the second section, which is going to be damage. I'm going to break this down in a very simple and easy to understand way. So here are all of our blooms, and they come in different layers, for example, red, blue, green, and yellow. You should know all this already, and each one of these is just going to take one damage to pop. So here's a dart monkey who has one damage, and it's going to take him as many shots as it takes to kill for the amount of layers that are here. The sniper, on the other hand, has two damage, so you can take out a green to a red, for example, skipping the blue layer because he has two damage. And then we can buff this dart monkey, so now it does two damage equal to the sniper. Looking further, you can see that some monkeys have even more, like this 200 sniper monkey, which can pop these zebras into nothing. But as you notice, some of these balloons get harder and take more damage to pop, such as the Moab or the ceramic, which take 10, which is where we get something like deconstruction on the engineer, which allows you to get plus one Moab damage and one damage, which will make it pop one damage for balloons. But when it comes to mobs, you can see its pop count is going up by two. This is really special, and it also goes on for the Juggernaut, for example, 400, where it does two damage to regular balloons, but when you add the three ceramic damage, it's going to do five damage to ceramics. So let's take a look at these two examples. Which tower here is better? Now, this wizard has six damage and 10 Moab damage versus this boomerang, which only has one damage and one ceramic damage. So let's take a look at the third section, which is pierce real quick, and we'll find out. Hey, it's me, Dorio. I was mentioned in the intro last time I checked, 
and today I'll be explaining Pierce for you guys. In the simplest terms that I can think of, Pierce is the amount of different balloons that a projectile can hit. Let's use a base dart monkey as an example. The dart from the dart monkey has two Pierce, so it can hit these two reds before disappearing. So now that you hopefully know how Pierce works, let's go over some towers that have high Pierce and some towers that have low Pierce. Some towers that have high Pierce are towers that usually have explosions as their damage, like bomb shooters and mortars. Towers with generally low Pierce per projectile are usually fast attacking towers, like the Crossbow Master, the Sun Avatar, and the Tac Zone. There are some rounds where having high Pierce is incredibly important, so for balloons, it's dense rounds like 63, 76, and 78. And for Moabs, it can be rounds like 75, almost all of the 80s, and pretty much all of the 90s. So it's very important to have towers with high pierce so you can effectively counter these rounds. But low pierce still isn't bad, with a shining example being the tax zone, because it has so many projectiles even though its projectiles are very low pierce, just the fact that it has so many and it attacks so fast means that the pierce problem is still an issue, but it's not as bad of an issue as you might think. Remember when I was talking about the wizard and the boomerang? Well, they're back, and today we're going to be checking out how well they did. So we're testing them here against a bunch of mobs, and you can see that obviously the wizards that have way more damage are doing better. 16 damage compared to 1. So this really just shows that the wizards are better. They have way more damage and they are beating up the balloons way better. But this really isn't true and here is why. When we show this test against a different round, you can see way different results. And we're looking at Pierce this time. Pierce that was just mentioned in the clip before. So 7 Pierce on the wizards compared to 100 Pierce on the boomerangs. You can see that the boomerangs are just shredding. So does this mean that the boomerangs are better? Well, no. But the best combination is one of both. Having a tower that does good damage and having a tower that does good Pierce allows you to beat both of the rounds. And this is a big point. Having a good combination and good synergy will get your plane looking like this into like this and getting you wins on hard maps. The stats are kind of like a big slider with a bunch of random junk in the middle to mess you up. So there really is no one best tower, but instead a bunch of random ones, which allows me to use crazy synergies to be even hard random challenges in the game. You, knowing all of this and what is best really is going to come to intuition. That being said, you're probably going to figure out what works well together to make this perfect combination come together with a ton of experience, so it might be tricky at the start, but just understanding that this is the how the mechanics work and what you're trying to look to get will make you a lot better and a lot faster. Now, with that being mentioned, I'm going to pass you back to Dorio's real quickly to finish off the Pierce section. It's very important that you are using as much of your tower's pierce as possible, so it's usually a good idea to place them so that they are firing down straight lines, as most projectiles in the game travel straight, so making it so that they are firing down a straight line means that they will use as much of their pierce as possible. So that mostly wraps it up for pierce. It's a great mechanic that's fairly simple, and is incredibly important when making strategies. I'll hand it back to Chom Chom for damage types. Alright, so this is damage types. This is something that not as many people probably know, so let's go over this so you know what we're looking at. Here I have a chart made by a Reddit user uh, mentioned right there, and this is showing you kind of what these damage types mean and what pops everything. So here's some quick examples. Normal slash acid, this pops every single type of bloom. You aren't going to worry about what you have to pop with this. When you have plasma and fire you can't pop purples with this so that's the one weakness to this damage type the next one is going to be energy this can't pop lead and it also cannot pop purple balloons moving on from cold this one's pretty rare but it can't pop frozen balloons and white balloons are lead and then glacier just can't pop white while shatter can pop these frozen balloons, but it can't pop the lead balloons and then to end it all off sharp projectiles can't pop lead and they cannot pop frozen as per this demonstration. 
One thing that I'm going to note right here is that camo is not included in these damage types. Camo is a switch a tower is going to have it or not. So now this is going to bring me up to a point of a DDT. A DDT is black, lead, and camo, and only normal and plasma type towers can pop this. So how are we going to beat DDTs if only these towers can pop them? And there's a trick and we're going to show it to you right now. Let's take a look at section 5, the support towers. Now, unlike what you might think, the support towers are not just these towers at the bottom. They're more than that. These towers, in fact, are more likely to do damage than support, which is kind of funny. But they're going to be these guys, like the Relentless Glue and Moab Press. So now I here present to you the super cool support gang. These are all towers that you're going to be checking out in the late game and possibly adding to your defense to make your defense a lot stronger. I'm going to be looking at if they're good against these heavy rounds, such as round 98 where there's just a ton of BFBs, Moabs, ZUMGs, stuff like that, or if they're going to be better against the DDT rounds, which are going to have DDTs on them like 95 and 99, or if they're going to be better against round 100 or the bad. So this is going to be a brief overview of what they do. You're not going to be getting every single one of these towers in the game, but you're going to be needing to use a lot of these towers to beat some harder maps on chimps. And as you can see, like in some of these examples, I end up using a ton of these towers. They're very extremely important to use and you need to know what they do if you want to win. So in a game like this, there clearly is nothing going on, nothing supporting. You're not going to win with this, but when I get everything going down, it's with the support it's going to be great so the first one's going to be the hero the hero support is just whatever support your hero gets your hero might give support might not it all depends we're going to be talking about that in the second episode though so the first tower we're going to be looking at is the overclock the overclock makes a main dps tower a lot better if you have a big strong main damage tower that you want to make a lot stronger i recommend overclocking it because it does very well and makes the tower a lot better and it's going to make it better against all three sets of balloons. Now, the next tower I was talking about before and that is the MIB. This guy is very important because if you need your towers to be able to pop DDTs and give them normal type damage, the MIB is going to be how you do it. This guy's you're going to see him a lot, he's going to be very common and if your strategy needs this guy, you're going to be getting him. It's great. Now the CTA is like an MIB and an overclock combined and it's pretty cool. Um, it affects multiple towers so if you have a strategy that has tons of towers in them you could get a call to arms or even a homeland defense to make it better. The next tower is going to be the Sabo. This guy is essential for DDTs. He's going to be slowing them down and making your towers deal with them a lot better so if you need some big DDT support you're gonna have to get a Sabo. Very common in your chimps games. The next tower is going to be Moab Presses. These are going to be great against the heavy rounds and also another very common tower. I get them in pretty much every single game and they just take make these big long rounds go a lot slower. Our next one's going to be Main Moab. This guy's great against heavy and DDT rounds and is a pretty good addition and works out pretty well in mid game too which is pretty nice. The next tower that we're going to be looking at is Embrittlement. This makes a lot of fast attacking towers like this overdrive do a lot faster and it's going to be great against all three sets of rounds. Along with this, you also can remove lead property which is pretty cool. You're going to be seeing this in a lot of games where you're going to have a lot of projectiles being spammed everywhere. The next one is going to be a triple bundle. This is going to be the Downdraft, Balloon Impact, and Snowstorm. These are great against heavy and DDT rounds because they go and make all of your ceramics that are coming out inside just go nowhere. It stops them and they're very important if you're having issues with ceramics especially. The next one is going to be the Relentless Glue or Moab Glue. This one is vital. You're probably going to have this in every single game of chimps because it makes the heavy rounds and DDT rounds just go away. They're very, it's very, very important to have. And as you can see here, this Relentless Glue with a little bit of a bug was vital for getting uh, the super mines on off the coast in chimps when I did this with Sada. That was a pretty cool game. Now the Glue Storm is pretty good against every single one. And it's in, like the embrittlement where you, if you have a ton of towers being spammed, well, a ton of projectiles being spammed, this guy's going to make things a lot 
nicer, so like Taxone. It also, like Embrittlement, allows towers to deal damage to lead balloons, which normally aren't able to, so that is pretty nice. The next one is going to be Shattering Shells. This guy, I don't really use that much, but he can be good for a lot of strategies if you want to clear 86,000 RBE off of round 98. Now, the next option is going to be Decamo Options. These are for camo, obviously. You're going to be getting these guys everywhere, and there's a whole bunch, but I really recommend the Signal Flare, the Camo Village, and the uh, Decamo Sub. The next one is going to be Stronger Stimulant, and this guy is another essential one. You're going to have him pretty much everywhere, and he makes towers a lot stronger, like a lot, lot stronger. So you're probably going to be seeing uh, and using Stim a lot in the game. The last bundle of support towers that you're going to be looking at is the Sporm and First Strike. These guys are for taking out the bad. So if you need more bad damage, which is very common on the harder maps on chimps when the bad becomes much more of a threat, you're going to be turning to these guys. You can also use some other options, but these are pretty much the most common options that you'll see. And if you can first strike time, you're going to be taking out the bads way easier when they become super difficult on these hard maps on chimps. So that's pretty much all of the support towers. And like I said before, you aren't going to be getting every single one on your game of chimps, but you should decide what types of rounds your current strategy is weak against and get towers that support that. For example, if your strategy is very weak against DDTs, you're probably going to be wanting to get a Sabo instead of a Shattering Chels. Now we're going to go on to section six, the band towers. Hey, it's me, Dorio, and I'm just going to be quickly explaining all of the things so towers and mechanics that are banned in chimps. So for towers, it's basically just the farms. You can't use any farming. And you can't use the Legend of the Night or the True Sun God because you can't afford those before round 100. Everything else is technically affordable, even if it may be a little bit difficult. And for specific mechanics that are banned, you can't use continues, no extra lives, no income of any kind, so you can't make any extra money other than the 170 something thousand dollars that you make in a normal chimps game monkey knowledge or powers everything else is fair game oh yeah just a quick thing with Oban. even though it looks like he makes extra money in chimps with the bananas flying out of his wall of trees when they are popped and you gaining money from collecting those bananas that's not any extra money being made that's just the money you would have gotten from popping those balloons it if they were not popped by the wall of trees. So, no extra money is being made here. Anyways, that's all I wanted to say. Goodbye. I would love to thank you for watching. This was the first episode and it just finished, which is pretty nice. So I'm super excited for the next episodes to come out. So if you want to, you could leave a subscribe. That would be very nice. And if you want to see the next episodes of this series, you're going to go to the first pinned comment in the comments and click on the link to go to the next episode. I'll have all the information down there. So just thanks for watching. It has been a blast making this series. And if you're really excited, let me know. And if you want to see more, throw down a like on the video to show that you're supporting. Now, we're going to be going for all of the Black Borders, but in the next episode, we're going to be looking at all of the heroes and which one might be the best for you. After that, we're going to be showing you strategies. And if you want to talk to me on Discord and ask me about any strategies there, it will be in the description. And if you want to be able to find all the stats on the towers, I have a bot in my Discord that will show you how to do that. So you can join that if you want to look at those stats or talk to me and discuss strategy. Now that's all for this episode. It has just been a blast making it. I'm so excited for the rest of them to come out. And I really encourage you to go check out the rest of the episodes or just check out some of the other strategies and challenges that I have on my channel. That's going to be it and goodbye. Enjoy.